We're descending into the bedrock itself. This was discovered in the 19th century. Local people told Mariette, the archaeologist, that there was an underground tunnel, and so they did an excavation and they found the famous Serapium. Now, now. Now, now. So, some of these boxes in the Serapium, the box itself weighs 70 tons, the lid weighs 30 tons, for a total of 100 tons. We're going to find out from our geologist where the stone itself likely came from. Outside today it's about 110 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside, feels like it's about 70. Beautiful climate control. Okay. Okay, we're in the um, Serapium in Sakara, one of the most famous sites in the world, just opened since September 2012. And this is, contains 27 boxes, 33 niches. This is the most magnificent stone box we find here. It is the material, I believe, we'll check with our resident geologist, Susan Moore, porphyritic granite heat. The box being 70 tons, lid being 30 tons, 14 feet high. And the interesting thing is there are inscriptions on this box. So we can check them out. But what do we see? The inscriptions are incredibly crude. Cannot possibly be the same technology from the people who built the box. In fact, it looks like it was a metal chisel, an iron chisel, just tap, tap, tap. And if one follows it along like you're doing, Brian, you can see the man could not even draw a straight line. And the key is, it cannot be identified with any king or anybody because the cartouche is empty. Meaning the priests were setting this up for somebody to pay the money to perhaps be buried in here and never was. So they, they cannot be dated by the writing. And perfect square corners. This is where Chris Dunn went in with a level bevel to two ten thousandths of an inch. He put his light on it. No light came through. So we say estimated at least tolerance of two ten thousandths of an inch, which is not called for today. And can you compare the surface with the... On this side? Interesting here though, Brian. This side, we'd though? like to point this oh, out too uh -huh. though. Because people notice that there's gouges. There's gouges, yet it is polished. So this was original. 
This is original and originally polished. So not polished with a machine. We now have it, it's polished with an abrasive, liquid abrasive like acids. And we have some residue on the side. So they realized that this wasn't affecting the residents. So it stayed polished. And perfect square corners. Perfect square corners in a 70 ton box. Writing very crude, very crude. And much, much late 30th. Got that okay? Good boy, Good boy, that's okay. Daddy's in there? Yeah. Great. How is it in there, Danny? You tapping, Danny? Yeah. All right. Yeah, see? Good. Different residents, each box of Keep going, hands. Yeah. Let me show you, let me show you the. Uh, okay, great. All right, it's ringing. So as Stephen was pointing out, the hieroglyphics are incredibly crude, and yet the surface is astonishingly flat and polished. And so it's clearly obvious that whoever did the inscriptions was technically inferior to whoever it was that made the box itself. Um, again, we're going to ask our geologist where she thinks the stone actually came from to uh, make these 20 plus boxes, but we have to, uh, it's definitely not local. This is an area of limestone. Uh, this is like a cyanite or granite or granodiorite. Yeah, and this is because the pieces of cartridge is better. I mean, it's not okay, so you can say, it's not crystal. Yeah, so you can Let's say if this is not 70 pounds, let's say this is 50 pounds. And we have the, let's say one pound of the track, I think. Each one will have So, so 10 people, for time, 5 people, that means 5 pounds, that means 50 people. 50 pounds, that means 500. What is going to be? inside that box was absolutely astonishing when I was when I was able to hit the resonance tone that the box liked also curiously there are more than 20 of these hundred ton boxes inside this chamber all of them except one were found with the lid slid as if open the one that was still supposedly sealed off uh, they used gunpowder in the 19th century to blow a hole in it to see what was inside and they found nothing. Now the standard story of uh, the academics is that these were used to bury s sacrificial special Apis bulls. However, there's no way the dynastic Egyptians had the technology to be able to quarry the stone, move the stone, shape the stone, and put it into this underground system. Drum roll, please. Watch your step, watch your step. Watch your step. I got it, I got it. Empty niches. Watch your step. Watch your step. Whoa. 
all broken in pieces in here. If we look over here, here is a false door from granite stone. Oh, oh yeah, there's some writing. Yep. And yeah. um, here are the Usually, we'll change them more than any other But they exist in the world other else. So, if you look at around the boxes, there's always the two species on the sides of the box. Here's a box! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we found that box. Right. <laughs> That's really good. It's the largest one. Hey, it's a bathtub! You can tell about it. You can tell about it. But, you know. Careful, careful. Oh, this one's really yeah. small. Well, like, not small, sorry, but uh, not deep. It's not long. Which one? This one here. It's shorter. It's taller than the other one. It's shorter this way. Shorter that way? Some of them are way longer, yeah.